All right, guys, welcome back to another Campus Waterfowl podcast. I'm your host today, Sam Coates. I'm sitting down with the uh, University of Montana students. Uh, firstly, I want to shout out uh, Kent Cartridge and Spondow Firearms for sponsoring uh, Campus Waterfowl and everything they do for us. Um, and now we'll, we'll, we'll get into the podcast. I'm going to go ahead and, and just kind of go this way, and let's just have you say your name and your year and your major. Cool. Uh, I'm Logan Bratch, and I'm an accounting major, and I'm a senior. Okay. I'm Claire McAtee, and I'm a wildlife biology major, um, and I'm a junior. I'm Cooper Heaton. I'm a senior, and I'm a business management major. Awesome. Well, I appreciate you all uh, having us out here. Uh, we went on a hunt this morning. Let's talk a little bit about what the game plan was <laughs> and what ended up happening. And I'm going to go with you because you've kind of been point man on this on this whole thing. So talk me through what, what happened today. Oh, boy. Uh, got up real early. Actually, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring it all the way back. Let's talk about the permission we had from the refuge. Yeah. So and then we'll talk about the hunt. Yeah, so there's a private wildlife refuge down the Bitterroot Valley, which is, we were, what, 40 miles south of Missoula? Yeah. Um, I volunteered there a bunch in the last few years. Logan has worked there, volunteered there. Um, so I was like, you know what? Let me give him a shout, see if we can get some private permission. I have hunted there late season, and it's always treated me well. Uh, so rang them up, and they were like, yeah, of course, come down. They have pheasants on the property, um, some good fishing holes, ducks sometimes. Um, a little deer. prelude into the day. Today yeah, not, yep, yeah. Yep. Slight oh, foreshadowing. foreshadowing. Yep. Mm -hmm. Um. And yeah, and they were really amazing. They were basically like, you know, do whatever you want within reason. Um, they know our they know our gig, so so yeah, we got some pretty sweet permission today. Right, and that led into today's hunt. Got okay. up early, stopped at the gas station. Oh boy, sure did. Uh, so forty five minutes down, we spent like sixty bucks in the gas station. We did like Red Bull and beef jerky. Oh yeah. <laughs> and you guys actually came prepared with some food. Oh yeah. Yep. I don't want to. I'm not going to talk down on the last couple guys I've gone out with, but they didn't have a, a skillet. Or did they have cinnamon rolls and muffins? None of that, dude. Bagels None of that. You guys fed. You guys eat well here. <laughs> We're a food oriented chapter. That's <laughs> I for love sure. that. I love that because yeah. all you guys do all the meetings at your house. All the board meetings are yep. at my house. Um, and you cook for everybody. I, yeah, that's my that's my thing. That's what I live for. Photographer, mom. What was the other <laughs> title you gave yourself of, of the group here? I don't all. think I gave myself any of these. No, titles. somebody <laughs> said it. Somebody you said did. it. These, I just, <laughs> I relayed this information. But I think it was photographer, mom. <coughs> oh, what else was there? Guide. Guide. Professional shooter. Professional. Okay. <laughs> Chef. Reel it in. We saw that today. Chef. <coughs> yeah. Chef. Let's end with that. Sorry, tangent. Anyway, so we went. <laughs> we went down. Got a good hearty breakfast. Embrace the cold. Sure did. What was it this morning? Oh, I don't even know. Probably 30s. 30s. Not too bad. Pretty Well, pretty this is warm. weird, though, right? Because it's, it's usually colder this time of year. Yeah. You guys usually have snow? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you said? Yeah. yeah. And it actually snowed yesterday. Melted off. Thursday, Friday? Two days ago. Oh, boy. I love how everyone looks at me <laughs> on that one. <laughs> it's just like a little dusting. Thursday, Friday, a little dusting. Nothing that was Melted sick. off. Yeah. yeah. Right. It was weird, you know, cars saying it's 40 degrees, but snow's still falling. Right. They're usually off. <laughs> I don't trust my car. Thermostat. <laughs> Never have. It's always a couple degrees the wrong way. What's more accurate, though, the weatherman or the car thermostat? <laughs> Dude. They're both the car, car thermostat, probably. If I, I mean, if I had to choose one. It's telling you the actual temperature <laughs> of what you're dealing with. So, <laughs> the weatherman, true, you know. Very true. The but thing that gets you out here, though, is the wind chill. That's what'll like, hurt you? Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. That'll get you. It wasn't windy this morning. Mm -mm. <laughs> that was a problem we had. No. Sorry, I just keep going <laughs> off on tangents. Let me let me, uh, let, me let, let me let you tell us about how the hunt went. Uh, so we got there real early. We had the wonderful luxury of being able to drive to the blind. Dropped off all our stuff, and uh, from there, shuttled the gear back and forth, and some folks had to make a long walk while I sat my Self on the opposite side of the river, cutting down tulies, and uh, falling on the river. That was a fun one. And hole in uh, the waders. Big old hole in the waders. Yeah. Yeah. That was, 
that was rough. Quite rough. That's my backup here too. That's that's tough, man. You yeah. got a lot of season left. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. It's a problem. Second pair of the season already. Yes. Yeah, that's, that's not good. It's not good. Stuff happens. It does. Stuff happens. But that's why there's warranties. That's right. So got out, got down a bunch of toolies, uh, ended up stubbling up a few extra layouts, and uh, oh, throw back to r- go back to yesterday. Spent five and a half hours, roughly, touring the property, getting the lay down, and <sighs> brushing the life out of a wooden box to make so, it not okay. Look like yeah, a and wooden I want I want to talk about that too. That we were in a blind. Is that blind there just year round? Yes, mm-hmm. it is. Okay, but they don't they don't let people hunt it every year. Mm-mm. Or mm-hmm. you have to pay to hunt it. It's that a- section of the property is weird. Mm-hmm. Um, the south property is pay to play or cash in volunteer hours. Okay. Um, the north property is kind of overflow, in a sense. I've that's the only blind I've hunted there. Um, through doing waterfowl workshops and stuff like that on the property. Um, but yeah, it's it's majority pay to play. Okay. And it's 300 acres and 900 acres? Mm-hmm. About, yeah. Which one, I'm sorry, you might have said, but which one were we in? We were in? North property. That's like okay. the 300 acre Okay, one. gotcha. So there's another 900. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Gotcha. Just two miles down the road or so? A little less. Two-ish. And is that the only blind that's permanent on the property that we were on? There is one other blind that has remained elusive to both the refuge workers and us. You just can't sh- find it? Or what? Yeah, no one's been able to find it and... I'm not sure it's still there. I don't it's know. It's probably gone. Yeah. <laughs> I, I figure it's gone. They say there's a second blind. It's but buried under deadfall, probably. High water took it away. Yeah. Or something. Yeah. 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 So we went in. You brushed it in yesterday. Mm-hmm. Put the work in. It looked really good. I, I thought it looked really good on the bank. Well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. We uh, we took it from a very sharp angled box to a, Duck mass- fortress. a massive, massive overgrown tule bush that Unfortunately, a lot of our members were unable to see either when it came to <laughs> shooting. But <laughs> yeah, well, that was part of a pro- that was part of the problem. Yeah. Okay. Well, and I want to. We killed ducks. You guys, yeah. you guys killed ducks. We killed ducks. You killed three ducks. So we didn't get skunked. I was setting it up like we didn't see a bird. I mean, <laughs> I'm sorry. Killed ducks. Killed saw ducks. ducks. Yeah, we saw ducks. Mm-hmm. We saw a lot more than three ducks. Yeah. 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 Uh, it, was a, it was a fun time. Blew out a lung practically. Trying to help these, trying in. to get these ones working today. Yep. A couple did it. A couple did it pretty good, but a couple big groups did it good, and then everyone else is just not wanting to play, not even in the slightest. And and we talked about it, but was that? Do you think that's a a setup problem or a lack of birds in the area right now problem? Yes. Yes and yes. <laughs> yes and yes. Uh, more birds be you get some more to decoy. I think. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. We're, we're still shooting resident birds. Yeah. We're shooting someone's someone's backyard. Ducks mm-hmm. at the end of the day. That being said, too, that that little area we were shooting today it was a constant moving outflow of a creek, and it would do amazing when everything else starts freezing up. Gets that little sheet of ice on it because that that won't freeze over, right? And just due to the fact that we have so much open water right now, so few birds, right? Yeah, there are definitely birds in the valley. If we had been, you know, half a mile downstream in that timber or next to that timber, our day would have been very different. You know, you always say that though. Like you mm-hmm. always, I hope our day would have been you different. Al- well, and it's, it's not even that it's like you see them going down somewhere, but then I think, you know, <laughs> that if you were there, they would just go down where, you know, where you just were. Yeah. That's just how it works. Yeah. You just watch them pour into another hole. Then you move, then they pour into the hole. Then you move again. It's just, that's just duck hunting. Yeah. 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 But I want to talk. So not as many birds in the area as y'all had hoped. Mm-hmm. What what does y'all's how does y'all's flyway work? Where are the birds coming from, and like what time of year do they typically pass through? We get a good old push real early before the season. Mm-hmm. We get our small ducks, we get our teal, good ducks maybe. Mm-hmm. Kind of depends on the area. Also depends on the person you talk to at the end of the day. Yep. Uh, we of course have our. We are in a. We're close to the Perry Prairie Pothole region. We do have some nesting birds up here, and that that being. Park geese, mallards, gadwall, wigeon, you name it. But I would say we probably get our first good push two weeks before season. Uh, juniors shoot them up pretty good. 
So yep. they have a youth. They have a youth season for duck. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They do. That's it's awesome. It's awesome for the youth. Because I don't. And I could be wrong, but at least in Iowa, we never. I could be wrong, but I, I'm pretty sure in Iowa it was. The season started. Everybody. It's so just a great, no It's a great opportunity for yeah. the kids to get out there. I mean, get get the the youth are our future here for and, sure. Uh, yeah. I mean, we're all we're all young people here. Even all of us and. We're the future. Appreciate that. <laughs> thank, you. thank you for throwing me in a group with y'all. I appreciate that. We're all young people. We're the future of wildlife and uh, conservation and hunting. And if we don't get the people below us, that, that what are we going to do? Like right. we can't we can't let it die out with us. Right. So I would I'm say we get a good push there, and then kind of how everyone has a lot of time tough times in in uh, November. Everyone mm-hmm. heard like snap no, snap November, like November blues. That's us for most October. And uh, we pretty much stay without birds, or we only shoot our resident birds until that first good snowfall hits the ground. Okay. And push birds and down from Canada. Mm-hmm. Pra- you said prairie pothole region. Mm-hmm. What what is that? Prairie pothole region is the parts of North Dakota, South Dakota, um, and way eastern Montana, um, and that's just kind of where most of our birds in the U.S. are going to go ahead and have their hatchlings go ahead and have eggs. Right. Go ahead and nest. And right. uh, we have a nice littler population that nests up and down the valley, up north, out east, out west. And we, we we're not we're not as productive when it comes to reproduction as say the prairie pothole prairie pothole, but we get some birds at the end of the day that are staying around here more than just your normal locations when it right. comes to bird har- bird sure. harvesting and Hatchlings. And so the youth season opens when? Middle of September? Oh, gosh. I mean, that's got to be, I think it's a week before uh, week before normal opener. Our opener is 28th, so 21st this year probably. Okay. That's why it's, I think it's one week ahead. And you guys, your duck closes? January 17th, 17th. I believe. Yeah. I find that, I find that fascinating because <laughs> you guys are your one zone mm-hmm. for, a, I mean, a big state. Montana's a big state. Mm-hmm. And you know, like even I was broken up into three zones. And it's, you know, well, third Montana zone. is broken up, and there's a little bit different rules for okay. each region, mm-hmm. but they're basically the same. And then we got like we got the two flyways, Pacific and the Central. Mm-hmm. And so the Pacific is pretty much all the same, but then in the Central, I want to say it's broken up into two or three groups. Yeah, we got like the but Yellowstone Central, and then we can go okay. up to like the Benton yeah. area, and then. Plenty wood area. There's all different regions. Like and, and those dates are different. Opening days different in those uh, regions. Op- opening days is the same, isn't it? Yeah, I don't think the dates are very different. Okay. Um, I, I don't think the dates are different at all, actually. Yeah. But the so regs vary slightly. Yeah, it's just the mm-hmm. different bag limits and what you can shoot. Right. And like I want to say there's a couple units out east that I think it's open for another week or two after the Pacific uh, flyway. But Region not super one, for example, which is like the Yellowstone area, is and you can hunt. You can hunt like in the Yellowstone, like in the park. Or no, no. So <laughs> sorry, sorry. Um, I don't. I mean, <laughs> you say Yellowstone area. Uh, I don't. You know, I'm not I, I'm that familiar Yellowstone with River. Yellowstone okay, River. gotcha. Uh, that, for example, has been shut down. Right. You can't hunt birds at all right now. In okay. That, in that area. Gotcha. So there is some date variations. Yeah. Um, I don't know the reason that one's shut down, to be exact, but. Uh-huh. Sometimes certain things are shut down. There's certain areas, of course, you can't hunt certain times of year. But right. I would say our regions are not very distinct, though. Okay. And we just got the new snow geese season too. Was that mm-hmm. last year, the year before? Spring mm-hmm. snow goose season. So that's new. What when in what months does that run? Uh, I want to say it's March. Just it's it's not that long. It's just March and it's okay. About I think by Great Falls, mm-hmm. in like Central Montana ish, and a gotcha. bit eastern. That's new to us, and I think a lot of people are taking advantage of it. Mm-hmm. Most states, like, they have a season, and there'll be, like, an early split and then a late split. But you guys are just, when you're open, you're open all the way until you're shut down. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I found that super interesting. Yeah, it's awesome. I will say, though, although we are open till this year, the 17th. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I, feel, I feel bad. I didn't, I didn't introduce our, our fifth podcast guest here, making noise. It's Walker. Yeah, sorry, my pup's a little uh, <laughs> moody, should I say? The the Irish lab, the Irish lab. <laughs> he's uh he gets upset when he's not getting all the attention or he can't sit in someone's lap. He looks he's pretty comfortable. <laughs> probably wore out. Oh, he's 
He's a little tired. He's running all over the place. He's a little tired. Yeah. How how old is he? Uh, two and a half. Okay. This is the first time I heard about this. Importing a dog from Ireland. Mm-hmm. Why exactly did you do that? What, what, what's the reasoning behind that? A uh, good buddy of mine, a guy I really look up to, told me about him. He goes, I was looking for a dog. And he's like, you got to meet this dog, Walker. I go, okay. And I uh, went over and met the dog. And Oh, you went, you actually went no, over no, there? No, no, no. He was already over here. Oh, okay. Got gotcha, you. Met the gotcha. dog. And, uh, okay. Oh, I, I think within like three minutes, I was asking I was asking the kennel guys, like, can I buy him? I want him. How, uh-huh. much, you, how much you want? When, when can I buy him? When yeah. can I take him home? I fell in love with the dog. Like, I took a picture within like a minute of arriving. He was sitting up on a Momar stand that he ended up buying. Cause I, lo- I don't know. I took the photo, and I have it hanging up on my wall. I love the photo. And I fell in love with him like instantly. Like, I saw him, and I was like, you're, you're coming home. He just like immediately like crawled between my legs. And it, it's... It's been him and I since, and uh, just two young guys exploring Montana. Boy and his dog, man. Boy and his dog. It doesn't Story get better. Story as old as time. Yeah. He did um, well today. He did yeah. a good job. He's, yeah. You said two and a half. Yeah. Um, I think because, you know, when I was in college, I was duck hunting. Mm-hmm. Would have loved to have a dog. Hard to find time to train them, take care of them. How do you balance, like, you know, going to class, <laughs> letting them out, getting them out, training them, getting them working? How do you how do you do that? I have seriously lucked out. I'd love to tell you that I am able to create time out of nothing, but he has got to be the easiest dog I've ever had in my life. And I've had another hunting dog back home, and he it's just no comparison. I mean, look, he'll he'll lay down, and he's an easy dog. He goes with me um, to work sometimes, and he hangs around all those my coworkers. He rides in the car with me constantly. He's the easiest car dog ever. You'll forget he's back there practically because <laughs> he's just snoring away in the back seat. <laughs> Part of the reason you always hear music on in my car is you hear him snoring and kicking at the <laughs> yeah, kennel. He's kicking in his sleep. Up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's he's an easy dog. Um, he's just happy to be with me. He's just happy to be around. Yeah, and it's great. I think the balance just comes that I prioritize him before most others. So. Sure. It's just because I love him. I mean, he's <laughs> <laughs> boy and his dog. What can I say? Yeah, man. He's great. That's all you need to he's say. He's great. Uh, there, there's not a moment I don't want to spend with him. Every moment I've had has been only amplified by having him around. That's I, great, dude. That's awesome. Great. Um, back to the hump this morning. So finish up, killed three hen mallards. <laughs> <laughs> Birds yeah. a bird. You know? Birds a bird. Um, hey, if, if, hen, if hen and buffalo heads came in, we were still going to shoot them. Hey, man. Yeah, it, we're not we're not pure. Not we picky. just like being out there. I mean, well, we we went out there and there was a possibility of us shooting pheasants, shooting doves, shooting pigeons. Well, I did. I did shoot a, a pigeon. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, <laughs> you redeemed yourself a little I, bit. There. I did. I had a pretty big uh, mishap. Um, <laughs> yeah, there was these ducks and missed the first two shots and then the big flock and then I had one shot left and I just I choked and I just shot and. <laughs> Watched them fly out of my life. It was, it was pretty <laughs> close, and it was it was pretty embarrassing. It it's was, okay, man. T- camera was, wasn't rolling. Oh yeah, so. luckily. Yeah, but happens to the best of us. Yeah, it was. I think <laughs> the major lesson of today is that we all need to spend a little bit of time shooting trap and skeet. Yeah, yeah. Hey, it's still early. Birds maybe sh- not <laughs> you. Birds I <laughs> shot. <laughs> well, maybe not you. Well, you were you were mostly calling today yeah. too. Yeah. You, you took one for the team. Oh, very selfless uh, of you. Yeah, but. You didn't see there. There was when we had that single come in like mid morning, and we had that Drake come around. I I pulled up with everyone else, and there went fifteen <laughs> rounds. <laughs> <in> that Drake <laughs> at thirty Jeez. yards, kept just on flying. Yep, going. And I love to tell you it was a hard shot, but he was wings open, looking for a spot at thirty yards, <laughs> and it it was it was a little sad to see. I was like, oh, that was that was it's rough. Okay. I will say important context here. Cooper, out of all of us, is probably the most, like, ride-or-die duck-hunting guy out of all of us. Like, I know me and Logan both still have big game tags to fill that we're pretty, like, locked in on. I haven't shot my shotgun since last da- duck season, <laughs> so <laughs> I, I won't say we were prepared. No, yeah, it's okay. I, w- I will say we were a little rusty. You're shaking it off. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, tomorrow's yeah. gonna be a better day. Oh, it's a oh. new day tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. So, what tags are you guys holding right now? Actually, mm-hmm. w- you're you're a Montana guy through and yeah. through. Oh yeah. Yeah, I'm from Hamilton, Montana, which is like 40, 40 minutes to an hour south of Missoula, close and to I, where we hunted this morning. Yeah, 
Yeah. Okay. So I actually worked at the refuge uh, in high school, and it was like a, I don't know, 20 minute drive, 10 minute drive. It's awesome. Pretty close. And yeah, um, let's see. I already filled my elk tag, but now I have a mule deer tag I'm trying to fill, and I, I drew it this year as a watery de- mule deer tag. So I'm looking for something pretty big, and I don't know, I haven't had much luck so far. Where and like, are you? Uh, you don't have to give away where you're hunting, <laughs> but are you around this area? Or yeah, are you Western Montana. Okay, cool. So it's it's a, it's a low deer density, so there's not that many deer. And honestly, I mean, the first half of the season I was out there didn't see a single deer, and now with the rut picking up and the snow in the high country is starting to congest them, and there's starting to be a few more. But I think a lot of the bucks are still holding up high. When so do uh, when do mule deer? When are they in prime rut? When's the kind of the time to be out there? I want to say mid mid to end November, but like they're okay. starting to rut right you're, now. You're and, little, yeah, and really, it's like the cold weather. I think has a big factor on them, just like getting them excited, I guess. Right. But, and then I have a cow B tag, so cow elk tag still. Nice. But, and then and a river bottom buck tag. So I still oh, you got, got a lot of work. I to still do, got man. a lot of work. So. Yeah, that's what you're doing tomorrow, right? I, I hope so. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you might not be joining us. <laughs> yeah. Um. So. W- was it you that killed the elk the other day? What about the antelope though? You shot yeah, too. I killed an elk in mid mid to end of September. Okay, who was it that I was? You called me like, hey man. Oh, that was my buddy I work with. And okay. I called him and I was like, I called you. I was like, hey, I got I got a <laughs> buddy with a bull down right now. You he wants down. some footage. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, we got some footage. Uh, that was that was a great pack out. Oh my <laughs> gosh, six hundred yards slightest rolling hill <laughs> oh it was a I dream <laughs> oh my gosh i mean you you get a call like hey come help me pack out an elk i mean that that that's that's some serious weight and uh just just thinking about where i know a lot of folks go and i'm like great mm-hmm. this can be like three four miles of this mm-hmm. thousand foot elevation gain a loss or scree and scramble like this is gonna suck but this can be fun long story right mm-hmm. type two type of fun yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I got there and he's like, Oh, uh yeah, I mean I already have a skin and quarter. Just you wanna just help me carry it? I'm like, Yeah, how far are you? Like six hundred yards at most. Like, oh, oh perfect, this dude. is great. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> this is great. Yeah. So you got some tags left. Yeah. What 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 are you after? So I just got my residency here in Montana. So I'm still you're you're South Carolina. Yeah, I'm from South Carolina. And then we got a California guy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. California, sure do. California dreaming. Hey, can't choose where you're born. You can choose where you live. That's the truth, man. That's the truth. But yeah, I, I just got residency, so I'm still working on general tags. Okay. Um, so I have a general deer and general elk. What's that look like in Montana? You just It's over-the-counter? Is there certain units you can hunt? We have a lot of over-the-counter opportunities here. Um, I will say if you're a non-resident, it's a pretty penny and a half. Um, but yeah, there are certain districts you can hunt over-the-counter. There are certain districts that are draw tag only. Um, that goes for deer and elk. So read the regs. There are mm-hmm. lots of options, lots and of public land. You guys are both rifle hunting? Right now, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So archery season starts in, I think it's the first Saturday for most units, first Saturday of September, and it okay. goes till uh, the 20th this year. 20, so October 20th okay. this year. And then rifle season goes to basically the end of November, and then. We have like a ten day muzzleloading season in December, beginning of December. So gotcha. It's a pretty long season, and I guess Montana's based on like opportunity versus I guess like class of animals. Okay. So, so it doesn't really matter <coughs> the size, more population. Yeah, it's just kind of giving everyone mm-hmm. in Montana, all the residents, a chance to go hunt. And gotcha. Like there's for non residents, it used to be pretty like almost hundred percent chance of you hunting Montana every year, but there's a quota, and every year the more people apply, so a percent of drawing that tag that's a non resident gotcha. increases. Makes sense. Yeah. And are you doing any sort of big game? Or are you I, just um, ducks the rest of the I'm year? I'm going <laughs> to get that good old elk combo, which is not cheap. Oh, gosh, <laughs> it's not cheap. Uh, so are you resident? Are you, do no, you, I'm not. You're not? I'm not. Okay. And I, like, I was looking at it, I was talking to her and him. And I'm like, if I get this, please. I don't know what I'm doing when it comes to big game. I, I grew up in a family where my father hadn't started hunting but three four years before me and uh thankfully i mean it changed my life he introduced me to this but i shot one doe in my life and it Mm -hmm. was (laughs) i don't know what i'm doing so i was asking them i was like hey if i if i spend this (laughs) amount of money can you can you help me out and they're great friends that i've definitely offered to help and you guys kind of trade 
Yeah. You yeah. know more about the big game. You know more about the duck yeah. hunting. It's kind of a yeah. It's a good learning opportunity for y'all. Yeah, they got they got a bunch of girls about go shooting bulls and stuff. <laughs> I just want to shoot ducks down, feet down. I don't really yeah. care. Yeah. And we also we fly fish today. We did fly yeah. fish today. Talk to me a little bit about your fly fishing expertise. <laughs> okay. We made a whole video um, from it. We so, did. We caught some. I'm stoked about it, too. Yeah. It like, went really well. I had a blast. I was thinking about this on the drive home, and I'm like, I really should not have fished today. <laughs> I have tags to fill. I cannot <laughs> be thinking about fishing. You, you, we were dragging you out of the water. Oh, trying, yeah. Like, trying to get back. Oh, I pitched a fit. Yeah. Yeah. A hissy yeah. fit. One more cast and 20 casts later, yeah. still going. Hey, Claire, fit. Claire, we got to go. We got to go. <laughs> no, I'm going to stay. More, one more, one more, one <laughs> more. Look, I caught a fish. And you did, now. You did catch you. one, though, on the okay. way. Uh, last. Did I catch it or did I snag, snag it? Snag, catch. I mean, yeah. he was on your I hook. Think, one it way was, or another. He was looking at the fly of it. Yeah, I was. Thinking about it. Yeah. It was. Maybe not my cleanest catch ever. <laughs> but you um, guided. You guided. You guide fly fishing. I do, um, amongst other things. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I started learning to fly fish back in South Carolina. Um, my dad grew up in British Columbia, and so that was kind of a big thing. When I figured out I was coming to Montana, he was like, "Well, you need to fly fish." So he gave me his gear. Um, and taught me how to cast in the backyard um very loudly <laughs> um did, did he teach you the same way that you were trying to teach me oh absolutely just sternly oh that was my father okay absolutely i get it i get it now. yeah okay and i i kept my cool today you were good yeah, no, you were i kept great. my cool yeah you were i was direct you were it's the best way to teach somebody, <laughs> I think. I was direct. I think that's the best way to do it. Maybe a little bit mean, but it <laughs> no. came from a good place. No. Um, it's a ca you're ca you care. That's why. I, I do yeah. care. Mm -hmm. I care a lot. Um, but yeah, learn started learning how to fly fish in South Carolina. Moved out here. Didn't ever think I would be like trout bum or anything like that. Um, but got into it and then ended up working for an outfitter um summer after my freshman year uh it's half dude operation dude ranching and then the other half is outfitting so we pack mules into the bob marshall wilderness um and on those trips we have clients that just want to see country and horseback is the best way to do it uh we have clients that are interested in in hiking just camping chilling around in camp um but a big part of what we do is wilderness fly fishing. So la or after my freshman year, I was kind of just get, trying to get my feet underneath me in that job. Came back um, after sophomore year and got my guide license, started guiding fly fishing trips, and fell in love with it. Um, it's definitely made me better at fishing, like trying to figure out how to teach people how to fish. Mm -hmm. A lot of our clients are not huge fly fishermen. We do have some that are really experienced and just want to fish in new country. Um, but a lot of it, like we offer fishing to all of our guests. Right. So even people that aren't planning on fishing. So y'all do like up. horseback rides and stuff too. Yeah. Yeah. So all of our travel in the wilderness area, it's completely non-motorized. Okay. Um, it has to be done on foot <coughs> or on horseback. Um, cool. And the places that we go, you would not want to do on foot. Pretty extreme. Um, mileage wise. Right. The trails are the trails are good. Right. But mileage wise, you would not want to do. I mean, my longest trip this past season was seven days and we did almost 80 miles. Really? Yeah. Yeah. How many horses did y'all bring with you? <laughs> um, Usually we run 10 clients, five crew members, um, and then on that trip, I believe we had, oh, I want to say 15 mules, Okay. maybe a few pack horses, um, so it's a lot of stock. Yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot to manage, um, but we have good stock. They they mind their p's and q's and know what they're doing for the most part. Right. Others don't. But yeah. Yeah. Sure. That's part of the job. Yep. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. You did great. It was fun. We caught some trout. We, we caught, caught some, some trout, trout and what white fish? We caught yeah. some white fish white today. Fish. Some trash fish. Yeah, no. man. <laughs> I don't yeah, want to hear it. <laughs> I, I saw you catch one. 
I, you know, I refuse to let me take a, a picture. A I, nice I, one too. Yeah, she stole it from me. She's like, well, I I'll take a picture. Not. Of it. But, I did not. No, um, I didn't want a picture with it. Someone had to get a picture with it. So yeah, um, I don't know. It's, I mean, they're fun to catch, but I think it's just like there's a fly fishing culture, especially in Western Montana. Where it's like they're not hard to catch, so it's like I don't know. they're not as valued. Yeah, it's like yeah. it's like a coot. So right, yeah, oh. it's like a coot. Um, like you can shoot them, but most people don't or <laughs> try to hide it when they do, unless they. That broke your heart right that there. That hurts my <laughs> yeah, feelings. Yeah, that broke your heart. But I uh, love a whitefish. Yeah, I yeah. just, I get the fly fishing culture, <clears throat> but to me, it's elitism. Like <laughs> trout are awesome. I love trout. Uh-huh. Don't get me wrong. Uh huh. But the trout don't always bite. Right. <laughs> the whitefish always bite. Yeah. And they fight hard. Yeah, they're fun. And it's fun. I've heard they're good to eat. <laughs> They're never had them though. Yeah. Never had them. Okay. Um. One day. One yeah. day. Um. But yeah, I I love whitefish. I found this interesting. You guys were telling me kind of a little bit about uh. University of Montana, and the different classes they offer, and tell you about the one you went on. You guys oh. did like a whole wilderness trip. You're it's like half a semester or something. Yeah, it's a it's a full semester. It's, it's a, a full semester. Full semester. Okay. Is it? Do they offer it in the fall and the spring? Only in the fall. Okay. It's through, uh, the program's called Wilderness and Civilization, also sh- goes by Wilderness and Civ, mm-hmm. and it's a really fun program. If you go to UM, you should absolutely do it. It's, I think it's the best thing I've ever done in college. Long story short, it's 25 hand-selected uh, kids that get put in this cohort, and... He's having a fit over here. I know, <laughs> he is. He is not... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I want to be over there with you. Watch the wires... Well, where do I go? Oh, boy. Okay, I'm going to lie down. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to get closer to Dad. Yeah. <laughs> right on my toes. Good job, Bubba. Um, 25 kids, you all take the same classes. Those are the only classes you take. And uh, in one semester, you actually get your minor. And you think, like, oh, wow, you can get a semester and a minor. Like, it's a lot of work. And especially considering, I mean, semester is, what, 16 weeks, four months? For the first two months you're gone you're in the back country you're in the wilderness you're doing x y and z like we did uh first we jumped into wilderness first day and then we went up to holland lake let's not have you strangle yourself with the cord <laughs> um went up to holland lake and then we went up the scapegoat and we went up to the bob and then we went wait uh, what are y'all doing Wh- like while you're in there what are you guys doing Hiking around, hiking you, you around, taking, like samples of anything. Kind of like, depends on the thing. Like uh-huh. uh, Holland, we were doing a lot of studies on like the undergrowth of the forestry, okay, and just of uh, the trees and samplings around town, around mm-hmm. the sorry the forest, and uh, we were also looking at erosion marks from the waterfowl they have above Holland Lake, and then we, uh, oh gosh, when we jumped into the rattlesnake, we set up uh, trail cameras, and we were tracking ex-urban versus sur- suburban and rural areas in regards to different types of wildlife. Uh, my group was studying black bears and kind of the cohesion we see between where they seem more pop, where are you going to see them more commonly? And uh, On campus. Yeah. 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 Oh, oh yeah. gosh. That was a first for me. Yeah. <laughs> We're sitting in the layout blinds today and, and you get an email, there's a bear on campus. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And apparently that happens quite, quite frequently. I think it's our have. fourth this week yeah fifth, fourth or fifth this fourth week fifth this week yeah we were Do going strong all semester with like no bear alerts uh-huh. yeah. mm-hmm. no bears on campus and all of a sudden this week it was just like every popped day. off <laughs> yeah and, like, yeah. What, what, what and you guys do, do do all the kids go try to find them or is that just like particularly i mean, uh, <laughs> I mean. <laughs> all the kids like us yeah 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah we yeah. logan and i found I out quickly freshman year that uh, we think they delayed the emails like we think that hey it's spotted and like we 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 went to the area that said it was spotted. Uh-huh. <laughs> it was yeah, not, there. not there. Not even any, like any close to sending. Yeah, we no think cops they might there, and like in the emails, they're like cops are currently there trying to scare the bear away. So mm-hmm. I mean, it could be fake. We I don't think anyone's really. They an delay it. Thing to fake. I, they I delay like. it to prevent freshmen people like us <laughs> doing what. We Why do, do they say anything at all then? What's the point of even giving people safety? Just to hey, this is cover the bear themselves? safety person of oh, the university. Not oh really. God. You're the That's bear girl. I'm, I'm <laughs> not what does this the bear mean girl. Exactly. I'm not the bear girl. I've done some like I've been involved in some bear safety seminars on campus, um, mainly in conjunction with hunting, like 
carrying bear spray when you hunt and stuff like that. Um, I'm not the bear girl. I'm I'm just a, a bear, bear girl. girl. Sorry, um, giving you props for. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, we do have a bear problem on campus, and they're all like dumpster diving, right? Black bears, not, not trying to cause any problems. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. we have a lot of apple trees on campus too, mm-hmm. and those are a pretty really? big hit for the bears and unsecured garbage. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. So, so, so jumping back into that program, yeah. so uh, we were just studying all that <laughs> stuff. We got. I forgot. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I know. <laughs> we are a great group yeah. when it comes to sidetrack. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah. Great group of that. Uh, I do a bunch of. St- we did some studies on that, um, and then we went up in the Bob. We did. Uh, we talked for a few days, and we're helping out at the Browning High School mm-hmm. outside the Bob. And then uh, when it did, I think roughly 80 miles to the Bob. Really? Yeah, that was fun. Splitting up between two groups. We had, uh, I mean, you can do the math. I mean, 25 if I was out to do Right. And two. 12 and a half, 12 and a half. Half a person. <laughs> 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 Going to the Bob. That was fun. That was, uh, that's a trip I will not forget. Gosh, fun trip. So are you guys, uh, like, camping out every night? Mm-hmm. That two months where you're. Oh, oh no, we were not gone every night. Like we'd okay. come back, of course, but and you'd come back to like campus. You'd be able to stay in your house and yeah. Okay. I mean, not when we're in the bob. When you're when you're backpacking through the wilderness wilderness area, you're not doing that. Okay. And uh, I mean, if you're you're back there, you're right. back there to stay. So how, for how many days would you like? What are the stints that you'd go in for? Uh, I mean, Holland. I think we were there for two. Rattlesnake. That was like an in and out. We have a wilderness okay. area ten minutes that way. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know the mountain that says the L on it, like right on the opposite side of it. When okay. You're coming in town. Gotcha. And we were doing camera stuff in there. Went up and studied some fire ecology stuff uh, down by Steve I, where okay. we were kind of by today. That was a w- the one day thing. When we went to an uh, an event down in Ovando near Lincoln, that was two or three days. Stayed at Browns Lake. Bob Marshall was a day or two at Red Eagle Campground, okay. East Glacier, and then. I'm gonna roughly. It was it was two years ago. Some dates aren't sure. exactly. Yeah, I yeah, say sure. between nine and eleven days in the Bob. Okay, that's that, I mean, that's that a pretty good solid. stint. Yeah. Do you guys pack water in there? Food? Like, what do you oh. do for? Well, <laughs> <laughs> I was frugal <laughs> and determined to do it my way. And I, everyone else is getting like mountain houses and dehydrating their own meals and making fancy like uh-huh. fancy couscous and stuff. Sure. I went. I had two backcountry mountain houses that I had, and I was determined. I was like, I'm not gonna spend. If you ever bought them, they're like 13 bucks a piece. When uh, you yeah, try, yeah. When you eat three a day. That adds up. <laughs> That's what. Like, and they don't. The school doesn't provide that. Mm-mm. That's interesting. Mm-mm. They had a dehydrator available if we wanted to hydrate our own meals. I was lazy. I what was, I what, was, was, what was your favorite mountain house? Can I ask that? Because I was oh, eating fettuccine them Alfredo. Really? Not even close. Dude, the teriyaki jerk. That one. That's pretty good. We were eating them up there when I was in Canada. That's what we were living mm-hmm. off of. I would say for flavor, I'd say fettuccine Alfredo. Okay. If I had to go straight calories, <laughs> I got to go Pad Thai from uh, Mountain House. Okay. Gosh. it's I think it's like 10, th- it's a, sorry, it's 1,000 calories. That's impressive. It's it's spicy. It's it's like painful to eat through the rest of it. You get to dump <laughs> this thing, like just dehydrated peanut butter in there. Oh, it's it's just straight calories. Uh-huh. And uh, I cheaped out and got a <laughs> 29 cent pack of Top Ramens from Winco and had those <laughs> and oatmeal, uh, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And then for, for lunch, I had, uh, again, I went cheap. I got a, I went to Costco, got uh, a giant jar of Nutella and a giant jar of peanut butter mm-hmm. and a, tack, a, a pack of uh, tortillas. Mm-hmm. I just smeared it together. That was lunch. Oh. Nice. Uh, it was miserable. not nice. It was a, it was a <laughs> big <laughs> mistake. <laughs> it was a big mistake. Like it, That's why I was memorable because I was the entire time. I was like, didn't pack right. This, this sucks. Oh, I forgot to bet the part that did save me. I got two <clears throat> of those giant sticks of summer sausage meat from mm-hmm. Winco. Oh, this my my diet consumed of a lot of salt, if you could not tell. <laughs> that was rough. Um Is this uh, when you got sick? Did you get Giardia here? Oh no, no, that no. A different that, time. Was, that was a different I didn't <laughs> I just had some bad food. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> had some okay. bad food. Gotcha. They they ele- they ate like nine. I remember I was, I was running low on nutrients as it was and a friend of mine broke out the hot chip. I was like that the one chip challenge, that super hot chip. Uh huh. You know, like broke off a little piece and had some and <laughs> I lost whatever was remaining <laughs> in my body. <laughs> oh, no. it, was, it, was, it was. Is it as hot as they say? I I mean, 
I think my brain is kind of like blocked out the memory. Sure. But it, was blacked it out. hurts. Yeah. I, I mean, it hurts so bad that I was like just scooping my fingers through peanut butter, shoving it in my mouth, trying really? to dull any taste. Water just spread it throughout my body. It hurt. Like we had one kid just screaming regret. Another kid immediately started puking within like two minutes. <laughs> I started puking. I started pulling trig, and I was like, I I felt. So I feel like this is a terrible place to do oh, the lunch horrible. challenge. Yeah. Horrible. <laughs> yeah, it's what, it's what happened. The back you. country in the Bob Marshall in the place to do it. I feel. Oh like. yeah. Oh yeah. And uh, I felt so bad that uh, the next morning there was a waterfall not that far from us. I say not that far. It was like it was like half mile mm-hmm. of bushwhacking through horrible terrain in <coughs> Tevas. Bad idea. And went and took a bath there because I, I felt like I needed to like reconnect with the earth. Like I was in so much pain in the morning. And it did help that it was solidly raining. And again, I told you, I was like, I was trying to make whatever I had work. Mm-hmm. I had a big old three person Kelty tent, which is not water resistant, not waterproof. When it's raining for like several days in a row, you wake up and you're still in a puddle. Uh-huh. You don't feel so good. Man, you just didn't pack right, man. No, I, I packed great clothes. Great clothes. Well, there you go. That was all. Was and it? I, and and when were you? Was it getting <laughs> cold when you were back in there? Was it November, December? Or was no, it no, no. It was uh, like third week of September. Okay. Second, gotcha. third week of September, and then after that, we uh, did a little canoe trip and pack raft trip down uh, parts of the Flathead River. Nice. On that wild and scenic river, and. Uh, then I went and had the amazing opportunity to go speak with the Blackfeet Tribe and Nation. Oh, that that's was cool. amazing. Is that the is this area predominantly Blackfeet Tribe or where North of us is North? yeah. The okay. reservation above is gotcha. Blackfeet. And it, it was an amazing experience that cool. I, I, I look back on that I'm like that was some of the coolest things I'll ever do in my did life. Did it did it have to be part of your major? Mm <laughs> Anyone you can just, sign up for you that just thing. Take it. Have y'all taken it before? Mm-mm. I've begged you, everyone I know like really? take the class. You guys, plan I will on say like, it? Yeah. I would if I had the time. Yeah, I mean, just it just doesn't work into my schedule. Yeah, yeah, same with me. I I didn't really know about it freshman year, and then right now I don't really want to take the extra semester to do it. Yeah, so th- that is ahead. the fun part, right? The going out, right? But then you got to realize you have eighteen or seventeen or eighteen credits that you know is normally spread out between sixteen weeks, which mm-hmm. is it's still it's sizable. Especially mm-hmm. them all being like honors classes and whatnot, like it, it's it's not the most fun. And then uh, you go ahead and cut your time into eight weeks for doing all those classes. So do, it's, it's a lot of heavy work really quickly. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it sounds like it. But do do you get kind of a break? Like, there's no way you just miss two months of a course and then no, pop we, in we, in the we middle, like show so up and stuff. Is it like a, is it like a? It's all integrated. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's it's all integrated. The professors, okay. like the only people in the class are us. The professors gotcha. are specif- specifically chosen for this program okay. or asked to be in the program. And uh, it's, it's, it's well run. It's, it could not run smoother. It's a great program. It's tough to, while you're doing it the second half. But uh, like if I could redo it, I would. It was that amazing. Right. That That's amazing. cool. It's cool they offer something like that. Yeah. I feel like there's not many schools that you could go to. That would offer a, a course like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, UM is great about offering like really niche opportunities like that, mm-hmm. especially like how obsessed with the outdoors we are in this community. Like not like not just hunting. Hunting is a very slim part of it. Um, you know, skiing, backpacking, climbing you know water water sports they're, so they're very sports. pro like get outside oh yeah, yeah. okay oh, that's, yeah. that's awesome when i moved here i was told this town runs on tevas chacos <laughs> uh nalgene water bottles <laughs> and subaru outbacks yeah and that is proven very true. true oh my gosh very like, true there's so many facebook groups of the missoula adventure group missoula mm-hmm. climbing group missoula backcountry group missoula ski like there is just yeah it's awesome so everyone does mm-hmm. it yeah Mine and Cooper's uh, dorm hall pretty much all weekend was just empty because you were like the outdoor right yeah, kids. Yeah. You guys are always gone yeah. doing, doing yeah. something. Well, no, we, we chose to live on the yeah. floor that was like outdoor recreation. That was like, okay. the floor. So if you were wanting to be a part of that, that's the floor yeah. you lived on. I did oh, that, Oh, that's too. awesome. So that's a good way yeah. to like connect yeah, you with other students who mm-hmm. are doing similar yeah. things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's why I met Logan. Yeah. Logan mm-hmm. lived right really? next door to me. My current roommate I met. He was on the same floor. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. So I kind of want to wrap up here with just talking a little bit about y'all's DU chapter, mm-hmm. what positions you guys hold. So it's... I'm the treasurer. Treasurer. Yeah. I run the social media. Social media. I'm the chairman. And the chairman. Mm-hmm. Awesome. 
Um, how, when did y'all get into it? Was it when you first got to campus? We are brand new. Okay. So this is, it, you, is this a new chapter? Did you guys yeah. start this? Did y'all start this? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. I, uh, I, I look back this afternoon just because I was curious on the dates. We've been talking a lot about, like, why do we even start mm-hmm. in the last year? Yeah, yeah, years. sure. And not for bad reasons. All no, for good. Yeah, yeah, All for yeah. good. I promise. I mean, I'm I, sure I said it's, a, it's a lot of work. No, no, yeah. but it's a lot of work. Oh, it's yeah, been it's amazing. Extra work it's been, on you it's guys, been amazing. Sure. Um, yeah. I look back and I saw that on uh, January 8th, I got a voicemail from our cur- current regional director, Parker Grandy, saying, Hey, my name's Parker Grandy. I'm the new regional director. I got your information from the previous regional director. I would love for you to open a chapter. Will you please go out to lunch with me? That's awesome. And uh, the rest is history. And it, that was I, how I, that was what three years ago? No, mm-hmm. no, that was Last this year. year. Oh, okay, this year. gotcha. Oh, so you guys are brand new. Then. Oh yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then uh, it, it took us a second to get off off the floor. Of course, mm-hmm. we had our first quickly recruit. Quickly, Claire was recruit. Voluntold. Voluntold. <laughs> <laughs> she's yeah. happy about it. Don't yeah. don't make it. Don't yeah, make it seem no, no, like no. she hates no. it. She's happy. No, I love yeah. it. I'm so into it. And then uh, I've known Logan forever, and Logan, I just Logan's a great kid. And uh, he's reliable yeah. as he come. And I, I was thinking, and I was like, who, who do I really want? I, I, I want like minimum. I wanted minimum like three people I could trust my life with. Mm-hmm. Like we're gonna do something great. We're gonna make something great. Yeah. And Logan showed up, and I was like, Logan, will you please, please come help us out with this? Yeah. And, and I've actually heard that you voluntold me potentially. Potentially, yeah. <laughs> that's the rumor. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's rumor the word on the street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the word on I the mean, street. I was in like the first like meet, I guess technical meeting for DU, and it was like everyone was like going around like, introductory and like announcing mm-hmm. the major. And I said accounting, and it was over at that point. <laughs> <laughs> it was like treasurer. Yeah, yeah you, just, so, well, you just got dubbed. When yeah. we, when we right met each there. other, he was a wildlife biology yeah. student, and uh, like you know, life happens. You kind of lose contact with some folks for and, sure. Um, all of a sudden, I started seeing him around the business building. I'm like, what? I'm, okay. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Logan's in here, and <laughs> I know he yeah. changed his major. I'm like, I mean, you could throw Logan in any position. He would get it yeah. done. He would get it done. Hon- honestly, Claire, and all of us, all of us, like, everyone on this board is great. That's mm-hmm. awesome. They're great. That's awesome. I, I I didn't know it was that new, so mm-hmm. yeah. props to y'all for, for starting that up. Um, I guess last question I'll ask you guys is where do you hope to see it go, you know, in, in the remainder of your time here, and then after y'all have graduated and, and – and moved on what would you like to see from it yeah i'd just like to see like i don't know just like continuing on like the strong chapter throughout the years and mm-hmm. you know do some great fundraising fundraising work for du but also like just like a group of people like friends and just like a club that like everyone's like tight or like put connected and i don't know i don't know yeah to expand on that i'd say like building the foundation trying to decide what events work in this community uh, what kind of tactics we need to be ut- utilizing, mm-hmm. how, how I feel like I grew up in South Carolina, very vibrant DU territory. Mm-hmm. Everything is completely different out here. The community is different. The events are different, what works and what doesn't. And so we're kind of just experimenting all the time. Right. And so I feel like it's kind of our duty to do those experiments so that the next board kind of knows how things go and what'll work. If you guys are interested in finding out more about uh, GrizzDU, um, our Instagram handle is GrizzDucks. So give us a follow. Um, I run the page. So if you have questions, give us a DM. I'll I'll answer um, and just show us some love. I just want to see this. It's a family between us so far, and I want to see that expand. Um, it's it's been amazing just growing so close with everyone here and just having such a great relationship with everyone and that's kind of what I want to see it become mm-hmm. and with that too uh, we get different awards through the Ducks Unlimited it's a collegiate organization and I want to see us be a gold sponsor one day mm-hmm. that'd be that's awesome that's my goal and uh, we're shooting for a bronze this year it's our first okay. year and uh, we're we're really hopeful we're really excited yeah well yeah. good for y'all. I, uh, I appreciate you guys having me out here. Yeah, mm-hmm. thank you. Yeah, thank Good hunt you. this thank morning. You coming. Yeah, uh, we're going to try to get on uh, tomorrow. Let's Absolutely. hope. <laughs> All right. Well, guys, this has been uh, Campus Waterfowl Podcast with the uh, University of Montana students. Um, videos will be coming out soon, so make sure you all are following along on the uh, YouTube and Instagram. And uh, appreciate it.